one of the fun things about the Higgs is it's been incredibly incremental. You go, Wait, where's your big headline? Well, you know, we ruled out a bit more mass. We've got a couple of sigma here. You know, there's one big headline for it, which people can hang all of those incremental steps on, and that's why they get in the news, and that's why people follow them, because it's an ongoing story. But it's like all science in the end, it is a bunch of incremental steps. The European Organization for Nuclear Research at Geneva only yards from the French frontier. Here, 12 nations have pooled their resources to study the nucleus of the atom. Down there is concealed a machine which is being built to speed up atomic particles to over 99% of the speed of light. The accelerator is the microscope of nuclear physics. And the finer detail we search for, the more powerful the tool has to be. There's, there's these two possible answers. That at the end of this year, we'll have a yes or a no. And this is uh, really fantastic because this, this question has been hanging there for the last 30 or 40 years. The idea of the atom is as old as science. It is the product of a very simple common sense idea. Take any object, a rock or a stick, and break it. Then break it again. How small a fragment can you make? If the Higgs exists, we don't know what mass it will have. And depending on what mass it has, it will decay to different particles. And because really what we're searching for in, in the detector is the particles that it decays to, um, this means that we have to look at a lot of different sets of particles that it could possibly decay to and search for it in all of these different places to find it and to finally understand what mass it really does have if it exists. The Higgs boson will, will if you want, live for a very, very short amount of time and it will decay to, to other things. They break spontaneously up into lighter particles and often these in turn break up into still lighter particles. Very few objects that physicists call particles are stable. This means that we have to look at a lot of different sets of particles that it could possibly decay to and search for it in all of these different places to find it and to finally understand what mass it really does have if it exists. This, this plot contains all the information about what particles you should look for if you want to see a certain mass Higgs. So for example, for the, uh, for the Higgs mass that people are getting excited about at the moment, around 125 GeV, you can read off that about 60% of the time it decays to B quarks. And these B quarks will produce um, uh, jets of adronic, uh, jets of particles in the detector. Uh, now, other channels are things like... A pair of W bosons and... Uh, uh, the Higgs decaying to two um, uh, Z uh, bosons, another particle that was discovered at CERN some, you know, many years ago. UA1 has singled out five events in a total of a thousand million collisions, revealing the expected signature of the charged W boson. The UA2 team has observed four events from the same number of collisions that are consistent with a W signature. Late in 1983, CERN was able to announce similar results for the Z particle. And there are a number of rarer signatures that you might observe, and those can be useful as well, especially, for example, down here, this, this pink line is when the Higgs decays to a pair of photons, which is something that people are especially interested in at the moment, because although it's a very rare signature, the Higgs will only decay to photons for this mass about 0.2% of the time, but it's also a very clean signature without too much background, which, is, uh, which makes it still really useful for searching for the Higgs. This is a, a highly evolved exercise in statistics uh, because we're, we're trying to put together all the, the little bits of sensitivity that we have for, from each channel and, and, um, and put all of this information together in the best possible way to, to, to increase our, our sensitivity, to sum up all the sensitivities that we get from, from the different channels. But this is awfully complicated. <laughs> Research in nuclear physics and elementary particles has reached the exciting point at which many, many facts are known, but most of the really hard questions are unanswered. We don't have any idea why nature chose to invent exactly the system of particles that she invented. We are beginning to see the characters in the drama, but we are still looking for the plot.